right. So, um, hello everyone. So as today marks, um, I guess the last day of this immersive uh, workshop, which was designed for high school teachers. And we hope that you all have a rewarding experience in the past two weeks. And uh, so today um, I'll be sharing my experience um, on the scientific inquiry project that I carried out with my high school students utilizing Canadian light source synchrotron. And the topic of my talk is the story of a student-led research, including a social science survey and spectroscopy at a synchrotron. So this will be the order of my presentation. Um, I will give a little background first on how I got interested in connecting my students to this scientific inquiry project and what approaches we pursue while constructing the scientific method of our project, skills and knowledge students have acquired during each step of this process, steps taken for planning and organization for a smooth execution of the remote engagement, challenges that we have faced, and lastly, the student's reflection. Well, the story begins with my participation in remote virtual annual teachers workshop at Canadian Light Source from sometime back in August 2020. Um, in a way, a bit like this professional development workshop you have attended in the past two weeks. So after attending this annual teachers workshop, I got inspired to take scientific inquiry learning and teaching to my classroom. And there, um, I engaged my students to light source student experience, the program that Tracy just talked about yesterday. And uh, coincidentally, I was teaching chapter light when I introduced my students to this program. And um, during one of my classroom, I still uh, remember that I introduced them to Synchrotron uh, and its role and application in science, research and development. And students uh, who got later interested in knowing more about attended LISI program in December, 2020. So during this three-day program, almost 15 to 20 of my students have the opportunity to tour the facility. So as you can see, Tracy over here, uh, ready to give us a virtual um, tour of the facility. Then the students were engaged with a beamline scientist to investigate the soil samples, and they identified the elements present in the samples. They looked at the data shown by the beamline scientist and got the flavor of data analysis by reading of the energy peaks and identifying the elements present in the samples. Also, they made the observations on the composition and the nature of the soil samples. And on third day, uh, the students were then introduced to different careers and they got the opportunity to, to hear from CLS staff members about their research roles and the work they used to do in various capacities at CLS. So this experience has helped my students to know about the scientific environment and they were inspired to take then careers in STEM. So that program was actually a change uh, making game for my students. Thus after um, attending that uh, LISI, um, um, a few of my students just got very interested in participating in the student on beam lines. However, just uh, seven of them become core team for this project. And we started on Feb um, last year um, with our remote fortnightly meetups with the CLS staff as mentors throughout the project. And our mentors uh, were Tracy Walker, Education Program Lead, and Dr. Robert Blythe, Science Project Manager at Canadian Light Source. So they held, guided, and facilitated the students to construct scientific knowledge. Well, in mentors' capacity, uh, they have provided the advice to enable students to make the decisions for their work, but they were not the ones who make decisions for them. So this approach has given students an opportunity to think with freedom to construct a scientific knowledge. And in terms of the learning outcomes, um, Throughout this um, student-driven project, they learn to revise, reflect, construct their work, and in turn, um, this has uplifted their confidence to do the science. And I have actually seen building up student agency in my students while working on it. 
Then um, as a first step, I had to submit an educational proposal. And uh, these were the components uh, that needs to be covered in the proposal. Theme description, outcome for the team, broad impact, and science topic. So I wrote the proposal outlining the team description in terms of differentiated skills, interests, perspectives they would offer to the project. So a little bit about my team. My team was a group of seven girls and they were from different grade levels, different educational system, taking different educational framework, national and international both. So it was a multidisciplinary group undertaking biology, engineering, and computer science subjects. Alongside, they have diversified interests. And um, these factors makes our team diverse as, as each member has something unique to offer to this project. Yeah, what? So, Can I yeah? disturb you and ask a question? Yeah, sure. What was the grade levels? I mean, how, what was the age of the girls? All right, so the age group varies from uh, 15 to 18. I mean, because this is a mix of a group, some of them were in grade 11, and I have few students from grade 10 and few from grade 12. So 15 to 18 age bracket. And they were all girls because you, you are at an, an all girls school, is that correct? Yes. Okay. I teach to all the girls. So you don't dislike boys or anything? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> okay. But I like teaching girls and providing them with the different opportunities. So, uh, yeah. Because uh, the girls are pretty much reluctant in doing, you know, STEM confidently. So that's why I try to keep my focus poorly on girls. But otherwise, as in extracurricular activities, I do involve uh, boys too, as my volunteer work that I used to do um, in one of the orphanage school. I did engage boys twice, so it's it's not like that I'm just wholly stick to the girls, but yes, my prime focus is on girls, <laughs> yeah. I think right. in Pakistan, uh, you don't have mixed gender, mixed gender schools, yeah? In Iran, we just teach girls. No, we, we do have, uh, for example, in our public schools, uh, uh, we have, you know, uh, separate campuses for boys and girls, but we have to, uh, in private schools, there are few private schools which run both. So uh, they have a new dis, um, uh, integration that uh, this is a girl specific and this is a boy specific school for private ones. So, but in public, yes, we do have different campus for girls and boys. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. All right, so this was a little bit about my team description. And um, then uh, once I have uh, submitted my proposal, my proposal got accepted and we officially received the beam time in August, 2021. And uh, then from there, the journey to construct a scientific method process continues. So in the spirit of a scientific method process, our first step towards the project was to identify or define a research question. So my team of seven girls brainstormed seven research questions, one from each member, ranging from environment, agriculture, health. Then in our first scheduled meetup with the CLS team, we had a discussion with them for project possibilities on each of the listed research questions. In the next steps, girls decided which could be the potential research question for their project. So me and my students um, set up a meeting over the weekend. During the meeting, girls just ruled out a few questions um, in the light of the discussion they had with the CLS mentors. And uh, these questions were then narrowed down to three questions and further to one as our final research question. So the final research question was then further redefined and redefined. Um, basically in the context um, of the technology and skill limitations that are present there um, with the samples and also the Canadian light source in Britain. So these are the learning outcomes or the skills that students have uh, obtained while going through this process. They learn to re-examine, revise, review, reflect, and rethink. Well, uh, this was our final research question, 
And um, my team um, also think of giving a provocative title to their research project. Uh, though this uh, part was done almost near to the uh, time of finalizing the project presentation uh, details, but uh, they thought of giving a provocative title to their uh, research project too. Then as a next step of the scientific method, um, students were engaged in doing literature review and to have a knowledge capacity building and to enhance the scientific vocabulary, they did literature reviews of previously conducted research in the domain of their intended research question, um, which has helped them gain in-depth understanding and knowledge. They focused on similar research that has been previously conducted in specific, um, uh, similar research that has been previously conducted in specific, um, you can say specific to Pakistan, which gave them insight uh, to the past work in this uh, area. And, uh, well, going through the literature review, we found the global impact of the cosmetic industry. And uh, they also got to know about the Minamata Convention in which 28 countries in 2013 have joined hands to set a threshold to the permissible limit to the harmful mercury compounds in skin whitening products. And Pakistan is also one of the signatories among others um, in this uh, Minamata Convention. So Minamata Convention has established a ban actually on manufacture and import of the products that contain mercury beyond the threshold by 2020. And uh, the other such research was conducted by the European Environmental Bureau back in 2018, in which Pakistan's Sustainable Development Policy Institute was a member. So going through the literature review, all this new knowledge was gained and attained by the students. So as a next step of the scientific method, we framed our hypothesis as this, that has Pakistan successfully limited mercury use in the skin lighting products, or are there any other hazardous metal of concern in these products? Well, um, we also incorporated a social dimension to our research by formulating a social survey. And the aim behind conducting the survey was to gather the data and monitor trends in Islamabad, population on usage of skin whitening products. So to compare the usage trends um, in different uh, population groups, depending upon their socioeconomic position in community, the other aim was to compare the trend frequency in relation to different factors, for example, the usage and spending trend, and uh, the potential reasons behind the usage. Um, including the societal pressure or the physical appearance, enhancing physical appearance. So to gather the data about the, um, and the, this survey also aims to gather data about the awareness among the population about the harms caused by the skin lightening products. So conducting a survey um, has provided a quantitative orientation to our research study. Well, um, after deciding on conducting a social survey, uh, in our fortnightly meetups with the CLS staff, the students took turns to share and present their ideas and work they did in two weeks time frame. And they received the constructive feedback on their work from the CLS mentors, as you can see in the above, they are communicating their ideas and then in turn receiving the feedback. So during uh, one of our um, discussions on conducting the social survey with the mentors, we were advised to connect to one of the expert or researcher or social scientists in our home country in order to know in-depth knowledge of formulating and conducting a survey. So uh, students contacted and collaborated with one um, of the researcher and during the virtual meeting with her, they learned steps of formulating a good survey considering ethical values, consent, confidentiality of respondents, and more. So a uh, decision of inclusion of social survey in our research process has helped us fulfill a broad impact section of the educational proposal, um, as we have also included a trans community in our research project. So, what was the method that was adopted formulating the survey considering the pandemic and lockdown scenarios? 
So we um, created the survey on a Google form and uh, conducted as an um, online uh, survey among the local population of Islamabad. While we make sure to involve the trans community, so um, we got in touch with a trans activist who helped circulate our survey into the trans community. And uh, the survey form was then also translated into our mother language or national Pakistan's national language, that is Urdu, for easy readability, as well as it was audio dubbed for the people um, who do not have formal education. So due to lockdown and pandemic situation, forms were circulated through um, social media to be able to reach to wider audience. So the responses that we received were good enough to do a statistical analysis on the received data. So here is a glimpse of the data analysis done on a social survey. And um, what are the learning outcomes? for my students, what skills and the traits they have learned while going through this process of conducting a social science survey. So the students have learned to make survey in a Google Forms. Uh, they got acquaintance with digital tools while translating and audio of the survey. They learned about conduct of the survey and collection of the data through such forms. They learned about basic data analysis and visualization using Excel features. Mm like pivot tables, histogram, pie charts, which they were not familiar with before. On top, most they learned about the ethical thinking. So considering the core ethical values, that is the privacy, confidentiality, data safeguarding of the respondent and appropriate inclusion of questions not to be sensitive to audience. So um, as the whole experiment was conducted remotely and for preparing the sample sampling kit, including sample holders, kept on tape and gloves were shipped to us from Canadian Light Source along with the return paperwork. So uh, while um, the samples and the other consumables for preparing the samples were arranged uh, from in-country sources. So this being my first experience and uh, I learned dealing and handling with the international shipment while making sure that the samples must be reached at the Canadian light source well in time before, before we have had our beam time. So um, after receiving the package, uh, the next crucial step was preparing the samples. And due to the challenges of the COVID scenario, considering lockdown, health issues, keeping in mind the SOP protocol. So decision on how and where to prepare the sample was a difficult decision. So finally, we decided on preparing the samples at my place here in the same room where I'm sitting right now. So you can see in the picture that the six of my participants, um, they prepared the samples. Um, however, the seventh participant was connected online as uh, she was contracted with COVID. But um, so, um, that was a hard uh, um, uh, actually in dealing, it was, it was hard dealing with these issues because uh, one of the students wasn't able to make it, but I really appreciate her enthusiasm that she stayed with us du on, during almost, um, it was a four hour long activity and she remained connected with us online. So I appreciate her for her enthusiasm. And uh, then um, the, the, uh, did some pre-preparation practice. Um, we cleaned the items, practicing wearing, taking off the gloves, holding kept on tape, and a few of the samples were prepared without um, um, any creams uh, inside them, just to uh, help students learn how to deal with uh, all these apparatus because everything was new to them. Handling kept on tape is not easy. How to place the sample holder inside the Kept on tape. So we did some pre preparation practice. And after that, girls prepared 20 samples very carefully in the light of the demonstration um, and instruction that was given to us by uh, Tracy Walker and Doc Dr. Robert Bly. And girls then packed and labeled the samples, and they were then ready to be shipped back to Canada. So throughout this activity, 
Um, students have learned about importance of considering the precautions. They have learned how to take care of uh, how to take care of uh, uh, the samples while um, in order not uh, so that they don't get contaminated and um, how to control the factors that could be of potential cause of contamination. So uh, here is a picture, <clears throat> sorry. Here are the pictures when our samples were received at the Canadian Light Source. So the samples were received in good condition with no damages. Well, on the safer end, uh, the girls prepared two sets for each sample for redundancy. As uh, maybe you would be able to see in these envelopes, we have two samples, two sets for each sample. And um, um, then we went for a scheduled beam time on August 14, 2021. So our beam time was a four hour long remote session with two mentors and a beamline scientist from the CLS. So during this process, students have to decide on steps how they would proceed with the experiment. Initially, the team planned to run XRF on all the samples as they figured out that switching between beamline uh, configuration to zines in XRF could be time consuming and with the possibility of any uncertain event. So uh, they, they may miss out investigation for their sample. So once the XRF was performed on all the samples, students went on taking decisions on samples with uh, higher elemental concentration to conduct zines for speciation. And um, uh, on one of our samples, uh, differential uh, zines uh, data was also conducted. So what were the learning outcomes? So it was students' first ever experience of remotely utilizing uh, the synchrotron. They learned to work on real-time data and how to proceed with experimental work. And alongside, they learned the importance of taking notes and keeping a record of their work. They learned making collective decisions, keeping in mind the time limitations. So um, after receiving the beam time data, our next important step was to analyze and interpret it. So this is the data of our 10 samples that we sent to Canadian Light Source. And uh, this is the XRF on all the samples, XRF data of all 10 samples. So this work um, actually requires extended hours and even late night meetings to interpret the data. So girls have um, worked dedicatedly for hours. And uh, they watched the videos first, and uh, uh, which were sent to us by the CLS as a resource pack that uh, um, how to interpret the data and how to analyze the data. Then students learn to use Excel to plot waterfall graphs, and they interpret the data after this practice. And after watching these videos, they started working on their real data from beam time. And while doing so, uh, they listed down all the queries. Uh, they have encountered during this work. And these were discussed during one of our scheduled meetups with the CLS team. So the Beamline scientists uh, were very forthcoming in answering all our queries. So these are a few more glimpses of our actual real-time data that we have received. So on one of our samples, this is a normalized data and the other one is a differential one. So what are the learning outcomes for my students? And throughout this activity. So students have learned the basics of data analysis. They have learned to work on Excel for plotting of graphs and data visualization and the literature review for Zane's data. Well, then um, as a next step um, to share their findings with the scientific community, they worked on preparing the presentation the presentation was started on Google Slides so that each member can work in collaborative mode. Also because the Google Slides gave each member the flexibility to work at her own pace and time. So as the girls initially finalized the main theme um, of the presentation based on analysis that they had performed, that is the social survey and its finding and the XRF and Zane's finding for the queen, so during the scheduled meetups with the CLS, the girls presented their work to them. 
for feedback and after iterations and rehearsals of the presentation, the team was ready for the final show on 17th of December, 2021. So what were the learning outcomes? What, or what traits or skills my students have acquired after uh, going or making this presentation? So they have learned to work collaboratively. They have learned to respect others' ideas and opinions. They've learned to build communication and uh, pre communication and presentation skills. And this has in turn enhanced their confidence and uh, they have learned to manage um, time and they've synthesized the available information to construct a meaningful and relevant picture. So this is the actual, um, uh, the uh, presentation slide of the students who have presented or given the presentation almost a month ago. So what is a way forward? So the two important steps that we are looking forward to in the recent future are to present a poster of the topic uh, of the project and uh, as well as writing and publishing a research paper. Well, um, as this entire experiential project was conducted in a remote setting and uh, uh, also as an extracurricular project completely on voluntarily basis. So strong planning and organization was required to keep things on the right track. As a first step of the plan, we had our meetings with CLS. And for these meetups, the links were uh, though generated and scheduled by the CLS team, which were shared with uh, me by an email. But I tried to keep my students posted with these links and other information um, related to the project. So as the second part of the planning and organization, uh, we have had our in-house meeting. Means the meetups that I plan and schedule with my students for summing up discussions after meetings with the CLS team. We used to share the ideas, um, used to think um, 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 on a way forward, planning, revision to the work and setting deadlines for task completion. Usually uh, for these meetings, um, the time varied between one hour to one and a half, but at times extends even more. And uh, these were set up either during the weekdays and over the weekends, depending upon the time uh, students could spare. The next pivotal point of a planning was um, common working platform. So considering remote setting, I created a Google document where students can collectively take notes, brainstorm and communicate the ideas, set goals for themselves. And this document has served as the repository for our work from starting till end of the project. And also for a quick and easy communication, um, I created a dedicated uh, WhatsApp group for my students where we can easily and uh, uh, share our ideas or agendas or whatever. Then um, as uh, the fourth step of the planning and organization, um, in context to the student agency, uh, student had the freedom to take on the roles and responsibilities. For example, they scheduled uh, in-house meetups themselves, take on assignments and tasks on volunteer basis. That is, they decide themselves on distribution of various tasks. Well, uh, as uh, the whole project was conducted remotely and um, conducting this extracurricular project, especially during pandemic was itself a challenge. So uh, we had to undertake this project on remote basis. And during this project, girls had to take their important exams and uh, were available for working on the projects at varying time slots. And um, as different students belong to different educational framework, that is a uh, few of them were taking national educational framework and few international, and both had different exam schedule and as well as preparatory frameworks were different too. So we at times had to take a gap so the girls could undertake their exams undisturbed. And, uh, uh, so there, there was a delay of a two and a half month as uh, one group of students had to undertake their exams and uh, student 
um, students time had um, at times students had some medical emergencies at home as well as um, when someone among their family or themselves would fall uh, prey of the COVID. Okay, yeah, sure. So throughout throughout the entire project, we had uh, deliberated to keep each member on board so that switching of roles remained flawless. So um, here um, are my uh, the reflections. Uh, the students are reflecting on their journey throughout the project skills they have acquired, challenges they have faced, exposure and experience that they have gained throughout this project, working on this project. So um, um, as the students have shared that they have learned to tackle most of the problems uh, that they encountered during an extensive research project. In addition, being given the chance to plan and execute everything on their own. So basically this project has given all of my students the liberty and the freedom to construct a scientific knowledge. And they have gained all those 21st century skills um, that we wish or want to see in our learners. And uh, starting from critical thinking, creativity, communication, collaboration, data, and digital literacy. So this Students on Beamline project has uh, to offer all these components of the 21st century skills. So these are my students' uh, reflections. And uh, each one has um, something to say in terms of the scientific knowledge, the freedom that they have gained after participating in this project. And uh, they have also built upon some new vocabulary like XRF, Zanes, and how the synchrotron can be utilized in uh, uh, different fields of science. And that is all. So this, thank you. Thank you very much, Mirvat, mm -hmm. and also congratulations to you and to the girls. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You Thank did you. a great job. Thank you. Good job, Mirvat. Very good. Are there any questions to Mirvat about her talk? Yeah, I guess from the social point of view, um, I didn't realize that skin whitening was a big issue in Pakistan. Um, is it also the same in other neighboring countries like in uh, Iran and other countries in the region, in Turkey? So um, when this um, students uh, have gone through the literature review, we came to know that it's not only Pakistan in which this um, high concentration of mercury levels in skin fighting products is a major concern, but it is a global issue. And that is why uh, uh, the Minamata Convention has been set, uh, where 28 countries have joined hands to uh, minimize the limit of uh, um, uh, heavy concentration of the metals in these products. Because um, the global cosmetic industry um, uh, has worth something up to, you know, expected to have 32 billion um, uh, impact by 2022, I guess, yeah. So um, it's, it's a world over uh, uh, concern. It's not just Pakistan in which the skin whitening products, but yes, there are some um, uh, local brands in which uh, 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 which, which are unregulated in terms of the high concentrations of mercury. But uh, we have seen uh, uh, this trend in the global industry too, mm -hmm. global cosmetic yeah. industry. And, and the other question I have, you showed these beautiful graphs, um, the X-ray absorption graphs. Um, mm -hmm. So did the students go back to those individual atoms that were identified and to see exactly which energy level did, you know, which energy levels were involved in the transitions in the absorption? Yes, exactly. So they, uh, once the data was received and uh, they read off the energy levels from the XRF booklet, that was shared with us by the CLS. And mm -hmm. um, after going through that activity, they have spotted out the elemental analysis. They did the elemental analysis. 
Great, great. So that's a fantastic talk. I think um, her school can have her university give you an honorary doctorate and, uh, and, and, and Andrea Lousy can hire you immediately. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, of <laughs> I, have, I have a question too. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Mirvat, for the a very interesting presentation. Uh, I have the question, what age were or, the, or are, because it was two months ago, uh, the member of the team, and in what uh, kind of uh, magazine or journal do you want to publish the results if you want, if you maybe? All right, so uh, we have not decided yet on it, but um, uh, we're, we still have to work, you know, um, in collaboration with the CLS. So we have a few ideas, but I would like to talk with the girls that what they have, because this is a student agency project and we want students to take the lead. So um, we still have not started working on the project. So it's a, on the poster. Uh, so it's a way forward. So uh, hopefully soon we'll start working on the post poster. And after that, our next step would be to publish a paper on our research, maybe in you science want, general or so, yeah. Do you want to bring this poster to a Congress, national or international Congress? Or? So uh, presenting a poster is uh, one of the um, I think post activity um, a requirement at the CLS. Once you have um, taken your uh, project, so you have to present your research um, in form of a poster. Okay. So, I see. Yeah. So, and what, what age? Uh, the age of the girls or the member of the team? All right. So, it ranges between 15 to 18. So, okay. I have a student from grade 10, 11, and 12. 12th grade, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much on congratulations because of the very interesting and important work. Thank you, thank you for your appreciation. And uh, Mirat, uh, thank you for your great presentation. Uh, you mentioned that actually your students uh, uh, use the Excel for plotting the graphs. And uh, did they do all of this by themselves? Were they masterful in using Excel and plotting the graphs, or they had some help? All right. So, well, um, students have uh, no experience on working Excel or making um, uh, waterfall graphs or even making a pivot chart table. So we have had our um, meetings in the evening. I used to arrange the meetings in the uh, with my students in the evening to go through the data that was shared by the CLS team as a resource. So we used to practice the data. There was a data practice file that was shared with us and uh, we sit together and my students used to explore after watching the videos that were also shared in the resource uh, pack by the CLS. And uh, then from there, they have learned how to plot the data, how to work on Excel. And uh, after doing that, they were all ready to uh, work on their real-time data. Yeah. So they, they used to um, uh, practice uh, the data individually first, and then we sit together to work on the data that we have received from the beam time. And then we used to present our working to the CLS team for any ambiguities or, you know, just That's to get great. their expert opinion. They have been highly motivated, actually. That's yes, great. and I guess I have been lucky in this domain that I have a highly motivated and enthusiastic uh, team of girls. Because in the situation of the pandemic, it wasn't easy uh, coping up with their regular school studies and doing some extracurricular project. So it's like, uh, yeah, I've been lucky. <laughs> I have one more question. Uh, in Pakistan, uh, all the girls speak fluent English, huh? or the school is in English no? there. Um, yes, there are schools in English and uh, in their own national language too. Uh, uh, the public school normally operate on their on the national language. They have uh, courses uh, in national language, but we have private schools uh, okay. which offer international uh, educational framework. So uh, their more focus is on you know the communication, language of communication. We communicate in English, so yeah. Great. So I guess uh, this is the same in uh, other countries too, that we are operating 
um, two educational framework. One is a public and the other one is a private. So private exactly. will offer both the national and international uh, educational one, framework. Yeah. And this is one of the most important problems here in my country. Now the school is in Spanish. And only in, in international school, we are able to have a student fluently in English. No? And, um, yeah, and that's it's, it could be a problem in the public schools, no? because the level in English is, is not the best. No? And then, yeah, but great. I mean, what I wanted to ask, were all the students, your students, um, like, did you feel they um, have like a science orientations or maybe some of them like have other, right. not so, uh, no, in school that they're, are they all, for example, in school, very good in sciences or math or do they have other backgrounds? So, Considering my team, um, I will not say that they were all very much science enthusiasts. So as I said in my team description that they were, they had a very diversified interest. So to um, have your scientific project uh, get rolling, we have to have a mixture of students. I mean, some science enthusiasts, some good at art, some good at graphics, some good at communication. So. Um, um, looking into my team, yes, I do have a few science enthusiasts who have very much, you know, um, 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 a core love for doing science. But the main thing is uh, the curiosity. Yes, yeah, the, they were all curious to know um, that uh, what would be the next step in our scientific journey. So I think that uh, the curiosity, um, uh, not just the science, love for science, but it's just the curiosity that is required. And I ask, how did you get the team together? You said that they were different grades and um, in different systems. How did you assemble them? All right. So, um, um, though the pandemic has, um, uh, you know, uh, changed all the walks of life, but I guess one added, added advantage that this pandemic has provided us to, it has bring us all together. I mean, uh, right now we are connected all together on a virtual Zoom meeting, which used not to happen before the pandemic, right? So, um, so I have explored the ways of connecting to the girls, um, those who are taking, because these were all my, my students and a few of them were my ex-students, few my present students. So uh, communication was not a problem because we have a different ways to communicate. We can set up the meetings. And um, we have a communication mode on WhatsApp group. And uh, yeah. Here I have, I, I want to mention one more thing, which I think I believe is very important in such programs. Uh, it is not only the scientific case, actually, it is also the mentoring you, you talk about. I mean, for these girls to see some women scientists in a facility like Canadian Light Source, this is this is something really, really important. I mean, they are probably they are not only from Canadian Canada Canada, but they are all from from all over the world. These scientists you work with, so seeing these women, seeing these women scientists, are very encouraging. I think for these girls, especially for the girls in our geography, in, in Middle East, in, in this region. Therefore, I mean, this side of, uh, I mean, the, this mentoring part of such programs are as important as the scientific uh, case, I believe. And uh, it, it is clear that you, you did this also. Thank you, and I strongly agree with you that uh, um, introducing such women in STEM to these young girls would really make a difference because they can then see them as an inspiration. And if they can do it, yes, why not we? So because girls are a bit reluctant in doing and pursuing science, especially when it comes in terms of the higher education. So. Uh, Introducing them to those uh, women in science as a role models would definitely make a difference. Yeah. So, 
Andrea, maybe you yes. also have some words. I have, I have a comment uh, yes, here. That is, because I, I'm really impressed by this work that has been done. It's, it's really, it is really wonderful. And I will, uh, I think I will add a note on this. Uh, so I, I am continuously giving uh, uh, introduction to synchrotron radiation so to various audiences in which I uh, list all the marvelous, okay, I'm bringing my case, obviously. So I am uh, uh, listing all the marvelous things that can be done with synchrotron radiation in many fields, etc. I think that this flexibility is key also to this kind uh, of applications. So I will now mention also the extreme potentiality for uh, educational and training of synchrotron radiation, which I never thought to put in the list until now. It's, uh, it's absolutely, uh, it's clearly uh, the fact that uh, you can have a relatively simple experiment on, uh, a, on an argument uh, that is close to the real life, uh, that uh, it in includes uh, chemistry and economics uh, at the same time. It, it all these, it, it's uh, inherent uh, for the normal users of synchrotron, but it is, can be uh, uh, exploited also for educational purposes. This is uh, groundbreaking. Uh, I've, I've, I've really appreciated very much this, this entire two weeks, I must say, and, uh, and, and your experiment in particular, because it's, uh, it was great. So thank you. Thank you very much for having involved Sesame. <laughs> thank you, Ozgun and uh, Tekazi for having uh, called me and uh, for having looped uh, Sesame in this. It has been, uh, mm -hmm. it has mm -hmm. been really a wonderful adventure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for, you know, you know, we you you hosted a workshop uh, only in December, and to turn around and host another one in January is just phenomenal. <laughs> so we really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, really. And uh, do you have any questions to Andrea uh, about such opportunities in at Sesame, maybe? For future, we should we should do it also here. Yeah, we should do uh, we should find out uh, a, a case. Uh, I was just thinking which kind of case we could uh, we could uh, uh, bring on here. Uh, I don't know the the collapse uh, of uh, Dead Sea or uh, so the what is happening there <laughs> happening there with the chemistry mm -hmm. and the salt or. Oh, really? uh, Dust, uh, dust storms. Uh, uh, so something which is close to uh, I don't I don't think that they are, I've never seen uh, um, uh, not to copy literally, but I have never seen adver advertisement for uh, uh, whitening product here. I have seen plenty of them in India. Yeah, it, India is full of uh, all supermarkets. Uh, you find a, a section for. Skin whiteness, uh, but we are not. Here is not the case. Uh, but it should be possible to find something in the region or closer to what is what is happening here. It could be done also, uh, uh, but actually, you don't need to have something. My my mistake doesn't need to be in Jordan. It can be anywhere in the world. So if you come with something that can be done with fluorescence again with powder diffraction with uh, IR contact me and uh, we will we will try to find out a way to to do this it, this is a wonderful invitation <laughs> I believe <laughs> uh, yeah so any any questions to Mirvat to Sekazi to Andrea please go ahead So, uh, hey, I just, uh, I, yeah, please. I, I just want to say thank you for, for the organization, or for the comment, for all the talk that you did in this workshop. And I probably we will keep in touch because, I, as I told you in one of my 
uh, a question in the last two weeks. I, I said that we are uh, in an effort with other scientists here in, in Latin America, in the Caribbean region, but also from Italy and from Spain, that they are collaborating with us uh, in uh, bringing, the, bring the, bringing the idea about uh, synchrotron in Central America because we don't have, yeah? And then probably the, the, the closest to, to El Salvador, for instance, is, is in the United States or in Brazil, yeah? Mm. And we are, uh, because of this experience of what we can do with synchrotron, we are trying to, to put this idea on the table of the uh, decision makers in our countries. And we will see probably, I will, I will send you, we send a paper we published a paper in, in Archive, X Archive. I will send send you the the link, and we send we submitted this paper also to the to the Journal of uh, Policy on Technology Management. Uh, I will I will send you also the the paper, and in this way we can uh, talk later about about uh, this project or what kind of cooperation we can have in the future. Mm -hmm. This will be very but thank, good. But thank you very much for everybody here, for the presenters, for the speakers, the organizers. Uh, thank you very much. It was wonderful for, for me to have this opportunity. I mean, I had the opportunity to be in a, another synchrotron in Germany, but, but this experience with CESAM, with uh, Canadian Light Sources, is great for me. Thank you very much. Really, thank you. It's nice to hear these Thank you. words, yeah. And please, uh, please keep in touch. I mean, please send us the link. So, I mean, I don't, uh, the aim of this workshop was also this networking. This, I mean, between the, between the teachers in many different countries, between us. So it is very important to keep this contact uh, and be aware of what the others are doing. So, so please uh, send us these links and uh, share us with uh, the other thing. Share us the other things you do. And and if I may add a, a request to all of you participants here again. So uh, just in case, if it's okay, we will share again a link to um to uh, uh, to the feedback form. If you okay. haven't filled it. Um, it will help us very, very much again if you could spare a few mo moments and uh, fill it. And it's important for us to feedback so we can prepare ourselves uh, better for the next time. Think about it. So, all right, you just it is, school, you just put it right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's now it's now in the chat. Is it the same as Tracy sent yesterday? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. So if you haven't filled it yesterday. Please take a few uh, moments today and feel it. It will help us a lot. And uh, today I received an email from Michele. So we, we will be able to put the talks, uh, the presentations in a YouTube channel. So we will arrange this with him. So I will send an email with the link. So you will have the opportunity to have the uh, presentation. Some some are in video format, some are on, as PDF. But uh, I will share the link uh, uh, with you as soon as possible. And uh, besides that, uh, Sekazi. Uh, also, yes. I think yes. we will we will share the certificates of our participants via email. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. So we will send you your attendance certificates for this uh, workshop. Um, and, and and I think you're going to take a picture. You're going to take a photo. Yes. Before people... Yes. I always forget. <laughs> I am not experienced. Okay. <laughs> Let me do so. Wait. First. You. Screen. Great, so thank you for opening the cameras now so we can have a fuller picture.
and I won't touch my computer, so it won't disappear <laughs> like yesterday. Okay. So, are you ready? <laughs> okay. Okay. Smile, please. Smile. Yes, I did. Okay. So, yeah. But but thank all of you, all of you, you who 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 took your time to be with us for two weeks. We really appreciate it. And, you know, we're hoping to have another workshop for high school teachers, uh, some several 